Suicide represents a global disease burden, accounting for nearly 1 million deaths annually and 57% of all violent deaths in the world. The prevention of suicide has been named a global and national imperative, resulting in really unprecedented strategies to advance awareness and treatment. Despite this, suicide continues to account for approximately one life lost every 40 seconds. Our program utilizes cognitive, biological, and behavioral testing paradigms with an emphasis on translational therapeutics for suicide prevention across the lifespan. Our mission is to identify novel therapeutic targets for suicide prevention, including early efforts to establish sleep and suicide prevention as a unique subfield within suicidology. Suicide rates have remained alarmingly intractable over time and in some cases have even increased. This motivated development of our NIH and DOD funded suicide prevention clinical trials testing efficacy of a non-pharmacological insomnia treatment among high-risk civilians and military veterans. Sleep is emerging as an important risk factor for suicidal ideation. Sleep helps our adaptation and function at every level and in all functions that we know of. So physiologic functions, mental functions, and cognitive functions. When we can control the amount of sleep through our voluntary behavior, we see that it has improvements not only in sleep quality, but also improvements in mood, improvements in physiologic functions, and ultimately even things like suicidal thoughts and behaviors. And linking sleep to suicidality really opens up some exciting new possibilities for how we might reduce suicidality through the route of sleep. We recently completed our suicide prevention clinical trials testing first-time use of a non-pharmacological sleep treatment, which targeted three risk factors, insomnia, nightmares, and sleep variability. Rather than focus on efficacy alone, we designed each of these as a mechanisms-focused clinical trial using a systems neuroscience approach, particularly because poor sleep and suicide cut across disease, suggesting a shared underlying neurobiology. The relationship between insomnia and suicide is well established from continents all over the world. But the burning question is, why does this relationship exist? And what we can recognize is that in the vast majority, if not in all cases, suicidal behavior follows a decision, that there is a cognitive process, a thinking process, that leads people down the path toward suicidal ideation and behavior. Is there a plausible mechanism whereby insomnia could play a role in that? And we think that there is. What we found was exciting. First, results supported safety and feasibility of our approach with exceptional tolerability, retention, treatment engagement, and not a single adverse event reported in this high-risk group. Everything essentially improved. Effects were large and fast-acting, and this was true across post-treatment reductions in suicidal, depression, and PTSD symptoms. We also found benefit to overall well-being, including markers of resiliency and self-healing. This is one of few areas of medicine where we can use the word cure. Our next step analyses include exploratory testing of neural networks underlying treatment alongside novel variables such as perceived stigma and hope, but all really suggesting incredible promise for adaptation to other high-risk settings, samples, or age groups. What's critical is the translation of research into policies, uh, into meaningful policies across multiple domains, both in the delivery of care, the funding of care, and the structure of care but ultimately uh, access to care. And arguably, the, the single greatest barrier to care for people that are struggling uh, with suicidality is stigma. Uh, you can look at, uh, at, at recent research over the last couple of years. Uh, more than half of the general population believe that seeking care is a sign of weakness. Uh, if you look in military populations, it's three quarters um, of individuals believe that seeking care is weakness. So, Really, at the heart of it, a central barrier to receiving care is this issue of stigma. Some people are reluctant to dive into psychological treatments uh, for things like depression. They may even be reluctant to talk about uh, suicidal thoughts and ideas and behavior. Uh, sleep, for many people, is a, is a less threatening area to, uh, to tackle uh, because sleep is seen as a physical function as well as a mental function. Sleep is a barometer of our well-being, and insomnia is an adaptive response to our environment, typically emerging around major changes in our life. Over time, the body simply gets confused. Is the bed a place for sleep, or is it for insomnia? 
So in this way, we view insomnia as nothing more than a learned behavior, just like it's learned over time, it can also importantly be unlearned. And so we can often use sleep treatments as kind of uh, a way of entering into a person's overall well-being. When we improve sleep that they may find more palatable, uh, we find that it also improves their, their mood and may reduce suicidal ideation and, and behaviors as well. Despite really unrivaled advancements in suicide prevention strategies, suicide rates have remained relatively stable over the past century. This motivated our efforts to enhance dissemination and policy, viewing such challenges really as an opportunity for change. We've been fortunate to work with partners such as the NIH, DOD, the White House, and others to guide national suicide prevention initiatives. This includes invitation by NIMH to co-chair the first inaugural workshop devoted to sleep and suicide prevention as a field, really bringing together world specialists to advance etiology and innovation. This captured a wide audience of attendees, uh, six different continents in over 47 countries. We were also honored to work with the state of California to lead technical development of our recent state strategy for suicide prevention focused on integration of best research practices to actionable strategic aims. A core focus of our program centers on multidisciplinary partnerships. And one illustration is creation of a multi-hospital, multi-agency strategic plan for suicide prevention here on behalf of Stanford Healthcare, hospital networks, as well as Stanford University. A final model of community partnerships includes the BridgeRail Foundation, which is a sole mission nonprofit focused on advocacy for implementation of a suicide deterrent system on the Golden Gate Bridge. Advocacy started almost at, uh, when the bridge opened, which was 1937. No action was taken until uh, in 2003, uh, New Yorker magazine published an extensive expose of the story. The net's set to be completed this year, and we're looking forward to it uh, getting us to zero suicides from the Golden Gate. What we know is this. If you place time and space between the thoughts of suicide and the ability to act on those thoughts, you save lives. The economic cost of suicide in the U.S. alone is $93.5 billion. The magnitude of this really defies comprehension in reflecting opportunity to prevent death that's really without parallel. This is where private and public partnerships and multidisciplinary collaborations are the only answer, as no singular approach will be effective to prevent suicides on a broad scale. I've devoted my life to this field because I know that together we can change the landscape of suicide prevention in our lifetime. Even one suicide is too many if that person is our loved one.